you don't have plan to change any of the how you stand on preschool. No, I don't intend to change my stance on preschool. In fact, we intend to next week come up with our plan, which I think is a sustainable plan to provide for quality preschool opportunities and to have families pay for it on a sliding scale uh, based on what their what their financial circumstances are. Uh, Lieutenant Governor and I visited the Ranch Preschool on Friday. I think they're doing it the right way. They do have a sighting scale uh, where uh, parents are contributing. Uh, and uh, I think they have a real quality program. Uh, and I think that it's a model for how we should do it. Uh, also, uh, uh, Representative Lofgren and Representative uh, Kaufman, who represent in that area, were with us, visited the preschool. Uh, I understand that Representative Lofgren is going to be the one that's going to chair the committee in the House to develop it. Uh, they've had a history in Muscatine County of doing a good job of this. And so we really want to pattern a statewide program that has accountability and that focuses on providing the needs and something that's going to be sustainable for the long term. Well, I think they're going to have a summit in Muscatine, Representative Lofgren um, talked about that. So we really are making an effort, um, both your representatives and the governor and I, to be out in the state meeting with you know, private daycares and schools and, and getting some feedback from them on what's working and what wasn't, and Durant was a great opportunity for us to do that. Can you talk about this? Um, sure. Allowable wow. growth, the House is moving forward with your proposal for the 0% allowable growth, but Senate Democrats are saying 2% is needed or there will be thousands of layoffs. Is there any room for negotiation? We're not going to do what they did last year, and that is not fund the money that the state commits to the school. Last year, they shorted schools $216 million. We're going to provide that money. So we're going to quit this over-promising and underperforming. We're going to deliver what we say we're going to do. We're going to provide stability and predictability in terms of funding. Uh, I think that uh, considering the financial circumstances the state is facing, and that we're reducing the budgets and many other departments and agencies that we're being very fair to the schools, we thought it was important to tell them up front that this is what we're going to do, and we are going to fund the, the uh, state's commitment under the school aid formula, but we don't believe that we can provide additional amount of growth at this time. Why should 277 districts be declining enrollment the same amount of state aid? Well, that's a decision the legislature made a long time ago uh, on trying to uh, cushion uh, the impact of declining enrollment on, on, on school districts. And, and I think as we review the school aid formula in the future, uh, you know, that's something we, we should look at. It also fits into my goal about 200,000 jobs and bringing more jobs to Iowa. As we are able to attract more people and more jobs, uh, I think that can also, I also would like to see us have a growing enrollment. And we've had a declining enrollment for the last, I don't know, 14 or 15 years. I would hope that before I leave office, we'll have a growing enrollment and we'll have more students instead of less students each year. But that, a lot of that is impacted by jobs and economic opportunities. That's why we want to reduce the tax burden for small business, the regulatory burden, and that's why we have the ambitious goal in terms of bringing more jobs to Iowa. I think that can help address that issue, but this, this, the school aid formula was uh, changed several years ago to try to cushion the impact of declining enrollment, and that's why you have that, that situation. So where will this conversation end if Democrats are saying they're not going to budge on 2%? Well, eventually, well, I think it's a mistake to say, well, we're never going to do this, we're never going to do that. I think we need to look at ways that we can come together. At the end of the day, uh, we need to get the agreement of the House, the Senate, and the Governor to accomplish things. And uh, I want to do all I can to assure Iowans that uh, we want to work with everybody. Uh, that we want to provide stability and predictability in funding. We want something that's sustainable for the long term. We want to get away from this over-promising and under-delivering uh, with surprise, huge across-the-board cuts and the state not funding its commitments. Uh, we want to deliver and we want an honest, but reliable budget that people can count on. And we know it's a, we know it's a frugal budget. We, we, we know it's a, uh, it, it's going to require school districts and governments at all level to make some tough decisions, but uh, that's what I was elected to do.
Uh, Governor, uh, you talk about some stability and predictability and not hitting surprise cuts. Do you think it's appropriate then with uh, the AEAs and the Board of Regents to be cut and House Final 45? Well, uh, let, me, let me say that, uh, uh, you know, th this is a tight budget, and, and it's, a, it, it's a austere budget. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a budget that fit for the biennium. So this is not being using one-time money for ongoing expenses. And we had a huge hole in the Medicaid budget that we had to fill, and we did it. And, and we also didn't want to kick people out of our mental health institute. So these are tough decisions we had to make, and we only have a limited amount of resources. Uh, and, and, and we wanted to provide stability and predictability in, in, in education funding, and so uh, you're right. Uh, uh, higher education uh, didn't get as much as K through 12. Uh, they're, they're seeing a modest reduction. They also get revenue from other sources as well. Uh, so uh, we're trying to put together something that's balanced and sustainable for the long term, and I think this puts us on the path uh, that, that we can count on and, and that school districts and, and uh, local governments as well as uh, those people that rely on state programs know that the revenue will be there in the future. Governor, have you privately decided to back Tim Valenti or where is the state of Broder? <laughs> this is unbelievable. I, there has been no discussions about me endorsing or supporting any particular candidate. I've said uh, very clearly that uh, I want to welcome them all to Iowa. I think they should come here. I think they should actively compete. And, you know, the way I've won elections in Iowa is going to every county, getting to know the people. That's my advice to all the candidates. I, I don't know where people come up with these ideas. They haven't talked to me, obviously, because people that know me, that have talked to me, know that's the answer that I've given every candidate. And I welcome them all, and I certainly encourage them to come here, and many have already. We, hopefully in the months ahead, we'll see many more, but uh, uh, that's my position. I was just absolutely flabbergasted that some kind of a uh, story would be written like that without ever calling me or my office. If they'd have called here, they'd have known better. Um, in November, you did indicate that you might yeah, way down the road. Uh, but, I, I, you know, the likelihood of that, I don't know. I'm not saying where it will be. You know, maybe maybe uh, eight or ten months from now, uh, it will become obvious to me that there's one candidate we think is by far the best candidate for Iowa and for America. Uh, I'm not there today. I think it's a wide open field. I think there's a lot of candidates. I think we have a lot to learn about them. Uh, they're staying... Uh, before we make any decision, but uh, and I'm certainly not ruling out that possibility, but I would also say I don't think it's real likely either. Are you concerned that states like Florida and Illinois plan to hold straw polls and that they take away from no. violence? You know, I've been around long enough that I've seen this. I remember when Michigan, we're going um, to take over the first of the nation status and all this kind of stuff. I've seen them do straw polls in Louisiana all kinds of places. But in the end of the day, I think that the tradition and the history behind the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primary continue to be very strong. And I continue to believe that the candidates and the media will continue to cover what happens here in Iowa. Not to say that they won't also look at maybe some strong goals and some other things that happen elsewhere, but I think that the first real contest is the Iowa caucus. And uh, I, I would certainly urge candidates uh, uh, not to take that for granted. And those that have in the past, I think they regret it. Thank you.